Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity Spiritual Community in Citrus Heights. Please join me in singing our opening song. wonderful music before the service and during the service. Good morning, everyone. And again, we welcome you to Unity Spiritual Community in Citrus Heights, where all people are welcome and where differences are celebrated as the splendor of God's creative expression. Let us open this service with a moment of prayer. So become centered. Take a couple of deep breaths. And we will be praying for our world this morning. We embrace the whole world during this time of prayer. So picture rays of love emanating from your heart and surrounding the earth. We are one. We are one in love, one in truth, one in God. And so it is. Amen. And your times of personal prayer, we encourage you to envelop the whole world in prayers for healing and for the unfolding of our divine destiny. And now Lisa will be serenading us again with We Make Our Own World. We make our own world. Will 
now let us share today's daily word. Today is Sunday, April 26, 2020. And the word for today is release. Today's word is release. I release all that does not contribute to my highest good. I release all that does not contribute to my highest good. <clears throat> John's Gospel tells of Jesus restoring life to his friend Lazarus, who had been dead four days. As Jesus cries, Lazarus, come out! His friend emerges from the tomb, burial cloths still covering his face and wrapped around his hands and feet. Jesus says to those who have gathered, Unbind him and let him go. Even after a sp spiritual resurrection, I may remain bound, like Lazarus, by thoughts, ideas, feelings, or habits that keep me from the full experience of freedom. Through my divine power of elimination, I release negative feelings, dissolve error thoughts, and free myself from habits and actions that do not serve my highest good. I am no longer bound. I am free. And the scripture for today is from John 11:44. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. And as we draw our attention to our prayers that we would place in the prayer box, in the lobby, where we in our usual meeting place, we envision our prayer box and we envision placing our prayers in that box as we draw our concerns into this holy place of sanctuary. Any concerns that we may have for ourselves, for our loved ones or for the world, we now draw into this place of consciousness. We affirm that these prayers in every moment, these requests are met, that our needs are met, that God is all that there is, that good is all that there is, and there is order in every moment in this universe that we, we live in. We release our thoughts. Our, our worries and our concerns, we release them into this loving care of Christ, the Christ presence. In this time when we may have worries occupying our minds more than we are even aware of, we just gently let those concerns go and accept that support and that embrace of the Christ presence today knowing that all of these needs are met. Our prayer chaplains will be calling you this week or next week for your individual prayers. If you would like to be included in these wellness calls, please do contact us by email or type your um, email, email or phone number into the chat and we'll make sure we include you in this list. You can also call, call Silent Unity at 1-800-NOW-PRAY, and there is always a prayer associate available for your own prayers. And now, will you please join me in a time of meditation?
we become still as we begin a time of meditation. Let your awareness be fully centered in this sacred space. Remember that the time you spend advancing your spiritual journey reflects your soul's true purpose. This is your life's work, to be one with the one, to remember that you are and always have been a divine being. We are born into this earth plane with all we need to fulfill this purpose. Our bodies, our minds, and our spirits are equipped to naturally unfold into the fullness of being. When we allow ourselves to, when we trust ourselves, we can look within for the guided the guidance needed for success in every area of life. We seek out teachings and teachers who remind us of the truth. Those with whom we resonate are the catalysts for our transformation. When we recognize the truth in their teachings, we then shed light into the previously shadowed portions of our consciousness. We are grateful to have tools for this process. We are grateful for those who have come before us, who point out the way for our own awakening. We never forget that we are whole, we are complete. Take a few moments to attune to your inner truth in the silence. As we return our attention to this Sunday service, let us do so with a sense of celebration. We celebrate having a spiritual community that affirms our inherent wisdom and goodness. We celebrate the Christ that dwells within each living being. We celebrate the truth that sets us free. And so it is. Amen. Spirit, guide me deep inside me. Take me to my heart place, the place of.
Thank you, Lisa. Lisa is our Minister of Music. You bless us, dear heart. Thank you. We're continuing a set of lessons based on the works of Emily Cady from the book Lessons in Truth. This is a complete work. She actually wrote three books. And this week we are on chapter two, which is called Statement of Being, Who and What God Is, Who and What Man Is. So we ask ourselves, what is being? What is God? What are humans? And in so doing, we have entered the realm of ontology, which is the study of being, B-E-I-N-G, being. A couple of months ago, I had a, a short lesson on a Sunday morning about classical metaphysics and its role in classical philosophy. Because metaphysics is not a stand-alone teaching. It is composed of three different schools of thought. And the first one is ontology, the study of being. The second one is cosmology, the study of the stars and the planets and time and space. And the third one is epistemology. Don't let that word scare you. It just means the study of how we know things. Do we know things through our personal experience in the external world? Do we know things because we've read them in books or been taught them by other human beings? Do we know things from our times of meditation, from the wisdom that is within each of us, our intuition, our instinct. Epistemology explores all of those things. Unity is metaphysical Christianity. And we are going to see elements of each of these, ontology, cosmology, and epistemology in today's talk. So let's begin with what is God? My favorite name for God is all that is. Capitalizing all three words, all that is. God is not an old man in the sky. One of the first things we do when we enter New Thought teachings is release things we were taught before. And some of these are embedded quite deeply, but when we embrace new thoughts and new definitions, we find that they make more sense to us. God is not an old man in the sky. God is spirit, spirit, energy. God is not a spirit because that would imply that there's more than one. And God is all there is. Katie, in the book, Lessons in Truth, says that human beings are to God as drops of water are to the ocean. So we and everything else are made of God's stuff. A drop of water is water. The ocean is water. God is God. We are God. Our total consciousness is much vaster and more aware than our human consciousness. So I want to work with the symbol of the avatar today. The word avatar is an intriguing word and it has multiple definitions. One of the definitions for an avatar is a God incarnate. This comes from the Hindu tradition, where a god can take human form, as we did. Another use of the word avatar is the symbol you select for yourself when you're playing an online game or even just in a chat room. You might select a picture of a woman with red hair or an Asian man. And that is called an avatar. It symbolizes who you are, but it is not the, 
the whole of you. It is a symbol for you. And the third use of the word avatar is in that recent movie, Avatar, with the big blue people on the planet Pandora. The name of these people were avatars. The thesis of the movie was that there was a human being who could project his consciousness into one of these avatars and experience the world Pandora as they did. They had big long tails. They were big, they were strong, they could swing through the trees. They did not function in the way that humans do. But because he could project his consciousness into an avatar, he could experience their world. And I think that is the closest to our experience as human beings. If we look in the world, we can find symbols of our greater truth. It's like our greater selves have left a trail of breadcrumbs for us to follow into an awareness of who we really are. So like a drop of water is to the ocean, a human being is to God. And that drop of water can be called an avatar. A couple of months ago, we had a talk scheduled that got lost in all the changes that we went through in our location and, and becoming online. And the name of that talk was Iceberg Consciousness. It fits right in here. Our avatar is the part of an iceberg that would be 10% above water. The part that we can see, the part that extends above the water into the rest of the physical world. While the rest of the iceberg, the 90% that is submerged, is like the vaster part of our consciousness that is on the other side of the veil, that mysterious veil that we refer to, which separates physical and spiritual realms. We created our avatars to experience this planet. This is God's work. I put several book titles and authors in the chat today, and you can see them, you can print them, you can reference them if, if they attract you. And one of them is by Barbara Marks Hubbard. It's called Emergence. She wrote an entire book about moving our point of reference. You know, we think we live behind our forehead. Most people, if you ask where their thoughts are, where their sense of self is, it's somewhere right here. She wrote this book about how to move our point of reference from our local selves, our avatars, into our greater self. And there is a parallel to what we call the Christ within and Unity's teachings about realizing the Christ within. The Christ within us is on the other side of that veil until we can move our frame of reference to embrace it and be imbued within it. We have accepted a limited definition of reality. In last week's talk, we mentioned the term Masters of Limitation. This book, The Masters of Limitation, an E.T.'s observation of Earth by Daryl Anka, dictated by Bashar, is the source of this term, Masters of Limitation. But what we don't realize is that limitation is both enabling and restricting. We need some limitation in order to deeply explore a particular aspect of all that is. So we can compare this to an artist who selects watercolors as their medium or a sculptor who selects granite as his medium and know 
that if you are in watercolors, you have a limitation. It's, it's two-dimensional. It's, it's on paper. It uses paint and, and water. If you've chosen granite as your medium, it's a whole different set of limitations. It's three-dimensional. It's hard. It's stone. You use a chisel. You don't use a brush. But in each of these mediums, you can capture and symbolize the beauty of all that is from a particular viewpoint, a particular aspect with these limitations, the limitations of watercolor or the limitations of stone, we can express God. Both mediums are valid. Both are part of a bigger whole. But in order to express an idea fully in one of them, we must limit ourselves to that medium in exclusion of the other. The earth experience is like that. We have chosen time and space as our medium. Our definition of time and space is also largely responsible for our limitations. The term master of limitation has two interpretations, almost opposite of each other. The first is that we have focused so much on the particular presentation of reality that is available within the limitation of time and space that it excludes other options. We've become to think that it is the only reality, the only thing that is real to the extent that we experience self-induced deprivation and suffering. Or the term master of limitations could mean that we have mastered these limitations, that we understand them as our medium of creation. We use them with intention and we do not imbue them with a greater depth of reality than they hold. Our chosen expression of all that is includes, okay, this is the part where you need to fasten your seat belts. So it's going to get to be a rough ride. Our chosen expression of all that is includes living on a globe. A globe that circles the sun with other globes that we call planets. It is in an unfathomably vast universe of other suns that we call stars. This is the part of metaphysics that would be the study of cosmology. Within this definition, we insist that this is real. And for centuries, we have insisted that we are alone, that our globe is the only one that contains intelligent life, that is part of God. We think that in the Bible, when it says in the beginning, it references the beginning of all that is, the beginning of everything. When that phrase in the Bible could more accurately be expressed as once upon a time. It's our story. It's when our story on earth began more than any other story. It's the beginning of a particular story set in space-time. Knowing what we know, perhaps from a book, scripture, in the beginning, is part of epistemology and that part of metaphysics. So there is one quote from Katie in this chapter that I don't agree with, so I'm going to share it with you. And she wrote that man is the last and highest manifestation of divine energy, the fullest and most complete expression of God. 
To man, therefore, is given dominion over all other manifestations. And the reason I disagree with it is it is seen from within this very limited definition of reality, the one that is defined by our illusion of time and space and does not include the massive group of of everything that can be seen just by looking up in the night sky, just by knowing that we are part of a much greater story. We are, however, this is not to diminish us, we are an essential and irreplaceable stage in the unfolding of our greater selves. Human beings needed to be who and what they are right here, right now, because we're on our way to the next best thing. We have, through various measures, restricted thought and speculation to unnecessary limitations. We have excluded information that would set us free. We try to explain all that is in terms of a watercolor medium, when in fact our medium is but one expression of God in an infinite number and variety of expressions. So I wanted to share a couple of other variations on the theme, these I learned from Bashar over the years, of other places and dimensions and realms that are populated by intelligent beings that are very different from ours. The first is a group that I call the Frisbee people. They have their own name. I can't remember it. I can't pronounce it. The reason I remember them as the Frisbee people is they are described as like a platter. And descending from the platter, hanging from it, are their appendages, what we would use as fingers and feet, and their heads hang down in the middle of this group of appendages. Bashar set up a connection with them, so it was like that old game of telephone when you, you had your string and you could talk to somebody, they could talk to somebody else. And the Frisbee people do not define their world as we do. We're, we're very much before and after, right and left, up and down. We map our world in squares and straight lines. But because they are radically different in their relationship to their world, they map their world in concentric circles. That's how they move. When I listened to the recording of the conversation with them, somebody asked one of them, well, how are you doing then? They said, we're doing okay. He said, probably the only thing that bothers us is that occasionally we emit a foul smelling gas. <laughs> and the person who asked the question said, well, we can relate with that. And I thought, I have just went to, it witnessed the first intergalactic fart joke. And now I told you. The second radically different group of people that I have been told about, I call the Jello people. In our world, we have this image of a bunch of balls rotating around a sun. And each of these balls, these globes, has gravity like coming from within it. And we are stuck on the outside, the outer shell of this globe, and that's where we have our civilization and our architecture and everything we do. It's where we think gravity comes from as we move through this space. The Jello people are in a world where the space itself is gravity. It is like Jello. It is like a gel of gravity. And each of their worlds is in a bubble within that jello. So they have a bubble and they have their world on the inside of that shell because gravity pulls them out, outward. 
So instead of being stuck on the outside of a ball, they're stuck on the inside of the shell of a bubble with a field of gravity around them. Now consider these two very different mediums in which God has expressed itself. Two different ways these drops of water, which are all that is, have set up limitations, gravity, balls, jellos, discs, so that they can express in experience a world as God with these limitations defining it as their medium. Okay, I'm going to breathe for a while. I think you should breathe for a while too. It's just enough to like shake you loose, to shake you loose from the things that you assume to be true, that you take for granted, that you would not question otherwise to open up your questioning to a greater realm of possibilities. And then I'm going to share with you my very favorite quote from Charles Fillmore. Charles Fillmore was the co-founder of the Unity Movement. And this is from a book called Keep a True Lent. I have a second edition of the book. This was published in 1955. The book was originally published in 1953. This particular book was loaned to me by Susan Freelds, who's online with us today. And I fell in love with it and I never gave it back and I still don't plan to. But this is my favorite quote from Charles Fillmore. He said, the fact is that the relationship which Jesus Christ bears to the human family is quite beyond our present intellectual comprehension. In order to understand the status of Jesus, we have to visualize a universe like that in which we live as having existed during billions of years in the past, as having fulfilled its mission in the evolution of a super race of men and as then passing away leaving as its fruit God men with creative power. Jesus was one of the God men of that ancient creation and it was his destiny to bring forth from the depths of being a race of potential gods, place them in an environment where they could grow as he grew and become, like him, a son of God. In the beginning, in the beginning, we were created with intent, and we are part of a bigger story than we have ever been told. Charles Fillmore took us further back than the creation of our world, he enabled us to use a larger context for our story. He conveyed, conveyed the idea that our world and our race were created with intent by our greater selves and that we chose to be avatars in both definitions as God incarnate and as humans uniquely created to navigate our chosen version of reality. So where does this leave us? Humankind is living a much greater, infinitely longer, and more connected story than is commonly accepted. Information about our story is available for the asking. You have within you all of the knowledge and understanding of creation. You were created with a pivotal consciousness. You focus outward through your human avatar and then through meditation, you can pivot back, back into the spiritual realm as the Christ within to the greater spirit of which you are descended, of which you are made, of which you will always be part of. 
you are part of a cosmic family of consciousness. You are never alone, always supported, infinitely valued and loved beyond measure. So take comfort, take comfort, dear humans, all is well. During this time of great turmoil, you and your planet are surrounded by infinite expressions of light and love and creation. You are contributing a precious gift by your willingness to be part of the time of Corona, Corona, the crown of the heart. So I wanted to share from one more author, Robert A. Monroe. Robert Monroe wrote three books, Journeys Beyond the Body. The second one was Far Journeys. And the third one, was the ultimate journey. He founded the Monroe Institute in um, Virginia. From his writings, I learned that those of us who chose to be incarnated as humans are ever after recognizable through all creation because we shine forth with our strength and our wisdom and most of all with our love. That's why we're here. That's why we do it. That's why we are willing to do these things. So continue bravely to live in the sanctuary of your homes and courageously attend your essential workplaces. Know that you shall forevermore wear the crown of those who serve the earth and all of creation. And thus ends the lesson. God bless you. Ours is a simple faith. Life is a short embrace. Heaven is in this place every day. Hope is the ground we till. Make each day what you will. Thankful.
right. We are now going to prepare for our love offering. So we take our gifts, whether we hold them in our hands, whether we make them online or um, on a recurring basis, we just take those gifts into our hearts and into our virtual hands this morning. As we give thanks and affirm that God is our supply, that we have enough, that our own blessing comes from blessing others, that giving and receiving are one in a wonderful circle of abundance. We are supported in every situation, and we give thanks this morning for this community, which is a sanctuary where we can celebrate together where we can be enlightened and every person is included. So for this in opportunity to support unity spiritual community, to, to enable us to continue the work that we do in this world, we give thanks and as we bless our gifts. Amen. Please join me in unity's prosperity prayer, knowing that divine love flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I choose to give, and all that I am open to receive. Thank you, God. Amen. You can find uh, the donate button on our website. There's a donate page. It's also on the home page. You can also mail a check to us at P.O. Box 2176, Citrus Heights, California, 95611. And we are so grateful for your generous support that um, for so many of you has continued through this time where we're meeting online. It just um, really, we feel so supported and we are so grateful. Thank you. So we bless these offerings knowing that Unity Spiritual Community is a center of the Christ love, mighty to attract good and to radiate good to others. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. I wanted to share a few announcements with you. Um, the first is my weekly update on my health. I am still having uh, very strange symptoms and I talked to a new doctor last week because my doctor wasn't available. I did not agree with what he said at all. I'm going to have uh, another telephone appointment with my, my old doctor. But the reason that I bring this up is that in the telephone conversation I had with this new doctor, I lost my temper with him. I ranted at him. I, I told him this is what happens when you get too many doctors. It's like too many cooks spoiling the stew. And then I realized I was ranting and I apologized. Then he said something else and I ranted again. Then I apologized again. And then just for good measure, I did it all a third time. I will give him credit for remaining very even throughout this whole call. When I apologized, he said he was getting used to it. And I would assume that with his job talking to people who do not feel well on the phone in the time of Corona, when we are all walking on ice all the time, that he does come across this a lot. And the reason that I'm going into such detail on this is that it comes up in each of our lives in many different circumstances. I, I know that I cry very easily, I laugh very easily, and I lose my temper very easily. So if you too are going through all of this emotional turmoil, just be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with the people around you when they're acting out because we are all operating kind of at an emotional overload right now. We don't have a whole lot to spare when we're put into a situation that causes us stress. I do believe that I'm getting a weller all the time. I 
struggle with my Sunday talks. I think that I do better each week and I'm hoping to continue improving. I, I'm so glad that you're here and that we have continued keeping our church going in this time. The next uh, announcement is a reminder about our quarter collection that we usually do during Lent and then collect all the quarters on Easter and buy microloans with them. When we bless our love offering by saying that we are a center of the Christ love, mighty to attract good and to radiate good to others, we'll know that this is one of the ways that we radiate good to others. We support these microloans all over the world and many groups of people have been blessed by being able to buy more livestock or a loom for their home business. So while we are at home, we are just encouraging people to go on saving their quarters, put them in a beautiful container, and when we are finally together again in the flesh, we will have a great celebration and we will put them all together and bless some more people. The next announcement is that next week our music will be provided by Heart Dream. Heart Dream, they are a couple named Steve and Mirabai Bangs, very, very popular in our um, congregation. They work on Zoom also. We're going to give Lisa a week off. She has gone beyond anything required in the last six weeks to keep our church going online and especially since I haven't been at my best. So do make a uh, plan to tune in or watch the recording later with Heart Dream next week. And one final announcement. Last week during uh, my talk, one of the things I shared was that a couple of doves had made a nest on a shelf set outside my back door. And I worried about it so much. I just don't think I could take another loss right now. Well, the doves hatched. They hatched a week ago. By the time I saw them, they were fledglings. They already had little pin feathers on them. And, and I noticed that the mama and the papa dove, because they take turns brooding, had moved to the side of the nest. And I couldn't figure out why they weren't on the middle. Well, it's because these little babies are getting big. And I've got photos on my um, Facebook page of the two little doves sticking out from under the brooding mama. And it just seems like such joy and such a symbol of hope and new life in a world that sorely needs it right now. And I wanted to share that with you. So God bless you all. I think we'll sing peace song now. Okay.
prayer of protection, we know that the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. We got a good thing going on around here. We got a good thing going on around here. You can see it on each and every face. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. We got a good thing going on around here. We got a good thing.